It seems like every Sunday in the NFL, a former Alabama running back is having a big day. Derrick Henry, he is a monster. Last year, King Henry, who rolled with the tide, won the rushing title, which led me to an interesting trivia question. Derrick Henry was the NFL's leading rusher in 2019. Who was the last Alabama running back that was the NFL's leading rusher? Oh. Time's up, it was B. you. If that face looks familiar, but you don't quite remember the name, well, you're not alone. That's former NFL MVP, Sean Alexander, the one with over 9,400 rushing yards and 112 touchdowns. Whoa, what a run by Sean Alexander. Can you believe that? Sean Alexander has been the man today. What's the record you love the most? I like the five touchdowns in one half. <laughs> That's <laughs> sick. Know. The handoff, Alexander, into the end zone. Touchdown, Seahawks! Slipping another tackle, and he's on his way to the five touchdown Seahawks! This These is, are the five touchdowns. Yeah, those are the five touchdowns. So I came off to the sideline. I said, yeah, hey, keep this. I'll be back. And then I scored again. And they're like, what's going on here? I was like, I don't even know. That's five! Wow! We sit and we laugh because after his career, we were watching a game together, and I'm like, hey, why, why, isn't, why aren't they just scoring in the red zone? Like, why isn't this just happening? And he's like, you know that, like, that wasn't easy. And I'm like, oh, okay. Made it look easy, didn't it? It was anything but. And he was like, that was pretty hard what I was doing. And so I think it really clicked for me what his football career was when he was actually done. Did you surprise yourself? Um, no. No. I like that. I really didn't. I, mm -hmm. I, I, I wanted to be like a touchdown machine. Man, my goal is to make the other team want me to be their running back. Yeah. You know? That, that was <laughs> your, your mentality headed into the game. I want to score touchdowns, and I want them to think, man, I wish Sean was my running back. Alexander has been impressing opponents since his days at Boone County High School in Florence, Kentucky, but nothing has been handed to him. My sophomore year, the season starts, and I'm just like a JV running back. He was like, yeah, Sean, get in there. And they pitched me the ball and down the sideline. And you know, I had nine carries, four touchdowns that night. And they're like, oh, <laughs> yeah, you're, you're that you guy. You can do this. I came out of nowhere. And then I broke all the school records. I broke most of the state records. I know I was on a couple of national yeah. records. Alexander the Great with his 107th career touchdown. Emmett Smith held the old mark. Sean Alexander set the new. Sean wasn't just another face in the crowd. His stellar high school career earned him a scholarship to Alabama. After redshirting his first year and playing sparingly the next two, he finally got the opportunity to start as a junior. He finished his career with the Crimson Tide, holding 15 school records, including rushing yards and rushing touchdowns. You're drafted 19th mm -hmm. by Seattle. Were you surprised that you weren't taken sooner, given how well you performed in college? I was. I was. I, I thought I was going to go to the New York Giants. Okay. And they picked Ron Day and a good buddy of mine who won the Heisman. Not, not bad. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So it wasn't a bad pick. I would have picked me. But, uh, <laughs> you know. Always bet on you. Always. My yeah, dad always got says to. that. You, know you got to be your number one fan. Yeah, yeah. Win it down. Yeah, go with you, you know. Alexander landed in a new place but was confronted with a very familiar situation. That year, you know, I'm behind the great Ricky Waters. Yeah, so yes, yeah, so so you get drafted. I got to wait again. Exactly, you here we are again, right? The same, you're like, I've done this before. I've seen this Not story. I've watched this movie, right? I will be ready. I will be when ready. They, when they call my number. Backs and receivers, and this is a big one. Ricky Waters dealing with that busted up shoulder and Sean Alexander getting the nod. It was a great start. In his first two games as Seattle's lead back, Alexander ran for 318 yards and four touchdowns. Sean Alexander is going to be a star. Mike Holmgren's been saying it. All it's taken him is two games to prove it. From 2001 to 2004, he scored 70 total touchdowns. When he wants to get into the end zone, he does. Hall of Famers Walter Payton, Barry Sanders, and Marshall Falk never scored that many touchdowns in a four-year span. Sure, they're gaudy stats, but they're nothing compared to what Sean did in 2005. Big one today, no okay? Doubt. No doubt. A lot of people, okay? All right, you do the best you can, like always. Sean Alexander 
knows where that end zone is. This guy is something else. So 2005, mm -hmm. you are the MVP. Yeah. You guys make it to the Super Bowl. Yeah. You have over 1,800 yards rushing and 28 mm. touchdowns. Yeah. It's a pretty good year. I was just like in a like a, a spiritual and physical and mental and emotional. I was just like at a very elite level like every week. I was just really locked in. Like every play made sense. Sean Alexander's at the top of his game. His 28 total touchdowns set a then league record. And that feeling right there is yeah. what? You know, like, you work really hard. Like, it always goes back to goal setting. You know what I mean? And so you, like, work really hard to, like, say, like, what is the impossible? And then you pick, like, a goal that's a little bit past that. Touchdown, Seahawks! And hand number 37 the record. Despite rewriting the NFL record books and leading the Seahawks to their first ever Super Bowl appearance, Sean's stature on the national stage paled in comparison to his peers. And then, of course, yeah. do you know his name? Yeah, it's my first uh, Sports Illustrated cover. And the first ever Seahawk to graze yeah. the Sports Illustrated cover. It's really funny, because that's kind of like my story. Like, they almost got to give you a hint. He's the leading rusher in the NFL on the best team in the NFC. That's kind of my story. Like, you know, uh, it's almost like I'm hidden, but still doing it, you know? Do you like that? I think it has its, it has its pluses and its minuses, but yeah. I, I'll take the pluses. I'm optimistic about this it, you is know? A good, this is a good plus. Another plus, the eight-year, $62 million contract Sean signed after the season, which made him the highest-paid running back in the NFL. His career trajectory appeared to be pointed straight towards Canton, Ohio, but injuries caused his production to drop, and two years after being named MVP, he was released by the Seahawks. He signed with Washington in 2008, but retired after just four games with the seventh most rushing touchdowns in NFL history. Clap on three. One, two, three. All right, let's go. All right, we're ready. Down to height. More than a decade after playing in his last NFL game. Make a play. Make a play. Oh, there it is. Sean, his wife, and their 10 children reside in rural Virginia. Touchdown. He's comfortable living in the obscurity that he tried hard to escape. Well, maybe not complete obscurity. Hello. Hi, there. Hi how are you? This is Sean, how are and you, you doing? are? Hey, Sean, it's Sean Alexander. Right? I am. Yeah. How are you doing? Hey, guys, how are you doing? <laughs> Special delivery. Hey, guys, Sean Alexander. Play. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. He has experienced a lot of different things in his life, including a awesome football career. Say hi. And I think it's developed him in awesome ways where he's nice. now a MVP dad to me. Third down. And for us as his family, we get to see that now every day after his career. How do you think that you were remembered in the game of football? I'm just thankful. If God gives me football, I'm not football. But man, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna try to go master this thing. And so that's what I did. When you talk about high school and college and the pros, that underdog, how do you view your story? I feel like it's one of those, like, I always want to tell the story, like, it doesn't matter what number you are in the line of order. When it's your turn, go make it happen. 